I've just had a bit of an epiphany, a bit of a revelation, shall we say, about these capacitors being used um, for power supplies and LED lamps and, and time switches and these little remote control units. Now, this time switch is kind of dead. What actually happens with this time switch is that when it turns on, instead of the relay coming in, it just makes a loud buzzing noise. And likewise, this remote control switch, when it failed, its failure mode was that when you press the button, it turned on, then after a very short time delay, it would turn back off again. And you'd press the button, it would turn back on, and then it would, after a while, it would turn back off. It just wouldn't hold it on at all. And... For some reason, I, I was just talking to someone about uh, the capacitors and they said, yeah, they can progressively fail and they, they reduce in capacitance when they do that. And I thought, that's quite odd. Um, I wonder if that's what's actually happening here. So I measured the capacitor in here and it came out at 47 nanofarad. And I have to say, it said 474 on the top. And I thought, oh, that's... Um, Possibly an indication that it's 47 nanofarad. It's not really for. It's not really a good indication. It's just I jumped to a conclusion, and then I looked at the side of it, and because I, I think of a 47 nanofarad as being something more like this size, and this was really big, and it turns out it's supposed to be 220 nanofarad, but it was just measuring 47 nanofarad, and I got another unit, and I, without really taking it to bits too much, I mean. I, I, opened it up and accessed the connections inside and measured across the same connections. And it it measured about 230 nanofarad. So definitely the capacitor in here had degraded. So I opened it up and these capacitors, I'll, I'll give you a wee uh, look at what's actually, how they're made. These are called metallized film capacitors and basically can the, a capacitor typically consists of an insulator with a metal film on either side and the area of the film and the thickness of the insulator determines the capacitance. So what they do with metalised film capacitors is if this is the film and that's the metalised side they lay another film against it and it's got a metalised side and the thickness of the plastic in between the two layers of metal it gives the, the sort of voltage rating of the capacitor, it's its dielectric rating. And the total area of the metallized foil uh, will determine the actual capacitance. And to make it compact, they take strips of this and they sort of they basically they spiral them together like that. And you end up with a quite a large area of metal with the thin plastic insulating it. And what happens with this is that if you've got the if you get the layer of the insulation and the metallization on the top and the metallization on the bottom effectively, then if the plastic breaks down, if there's a high voltage spike and it makes a hole through that, then in the immediate vicinity it does flash over and it just clears some of the metal on either side and it creates this little, little island around the hole on either side and that is what's called self-healing. It basically heals itself, it, it repairs itself in a sort of controlled manner. But what's actually happened in the case of this capacitor, and I actually took it to bits and unwound all the foil in the suggestion of a friend. He said it would be really interesting to see, you know, what it looked like. And it's quite unusual. I took a bit of it and I stuck it down to a bit of paper and then I took a photo. And this is the area that's supposed to be metallized, but it's gradually eroded the metallization away to the point that, you know, it's got all these little islands and it's, it's really reduced the amount of metallization. And the matching foil, the other electrode of the foil, was kind of solid. Um, it hadn't eroded in the same way, but it had this mottled effect in the middle of it where it had gradually been eating away. And that's what's re made that reduce in the value. And that's ultimately why it couldn't operate properly because what was happening was the reduced value of the capacitance meant that that's, the power supply capacitor was charging up. It was enough to run the electronics, uh, the electronics which are actually mounted on this side. And as soon as you press the remote control button and it tried to bring the relay in, that was the problem because the relay needed a good 20 milliamps to actually pull in and that dragged the, because the capacitor could no longer supply that current, it dragged the voltage progressively down on the electrolytic until it cut out and reset the circuitry. 
And likewise, with this time switch, the, it was trying to bring, it, bring in the relay, but because the capacitor has failed in this one as well, and it's not quite dramatic, but it's obviously it's just been operating its borderline. I think it's gone from 330 nanofarad in here down to about 220 or something like that. But it's enough that when, instead of actually bringing the relay in, the, the unit just made a loud buzzing noise. It sounded like electrical arcing, but it was just the relay crackling and buzzing backwards and forwards trying to pull in. And it's all down to the fact that the capacitors have progressively failed. And it makes me wonder, so... LED lighting, they're make, using smaller and smaller capacitors, which means they're making the film thinner and thinner and thinner in here, the insulation film. And that ultimately means that over time, when they've really skimped in the capacitor ratings, there's a very good chance that these LED lamps will gradually reduce physically in power, not just intensity. I mean, they will reduce in intensity, but they'll actually... It won't just be down to LED progressive failure and phosphor failure. The actual intensity of the light will go down uh, because it's simply drawing less current because the capacitor that rations that current through it is uh, is progressively getting lower and lower in value and letting less and less current through in each half wave. So that was really interesting. Um, it's just something that suddenly lots of things make sense. Uh, dimmers starting to fail, um, interference suppression capacitors starting to fail because, you know, you don't see it happening. Unless you actually went and measured those capacitors, you're not going to realise that the interference suppression capability of that capacitor, the ability to pass those spikes and transients, is gradually reducing. And that could cause things like processor crashes because, you know, the transients aren't being removed effectively anymore. So that was really interesting. It's just, you know, why is it taking me so long to discover this? It's really interesting indeed. And it means that things like this can be repaired. You simply take the capacitor out and stick a new one in, and that gives it a complete new lease of life. Likewise, I know these are cheap and nasty time clocks, but, you know, it's easy just to stick a new capacitor in that, and it will give it a new lease of life again. So, yeah, metalised film capacitors... They do progressively fail. And you think electrolyte, electrolytic capacitors, they tend to keep their capacitance value, but the, their sort of internal resistance goes up as they dry out. The actual liquid electrolyte in them dries out. But in this case, the actual plates are gradually vanishing. And the value of the capacitance is what's actually suffering in these. It's, it's progressively going down. So very interesting, very useful to know.